When you buy a new computer, it comes with bloatware, marketing junk, and a bunch of apps you'll probably never use. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can remove all the junk you don't want, but while keeping the things that you do. This is Nico Knows Tech. Nico Knows Tech, all your tech tips and reviews on deck. Nico Knows Tech, number one channel with the news on deck. Now when you get your computer or you freshly install Windows, you'll notice that your manufacturer of Microsoft has done you a solid by stuffing a bunch of marketing down your throat. They put on trials of Candy Crush and a bunch of ad generating programs. Um, you also have the Connect app, the Feedback Hub, you probably have maybe Fitbit on there, the Skype app, Netflix app, whether or not you're using these or not. There's a ton of components of Windows which are not required for you to use the machine, but they've just put there just in case. And I'm going to show you how you can safely and effectively remove this stuff so it doesn't use your system resources and it doesn't bother you and create some kind of privacy issue. Alright, so the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get a debloater script. And the one that I recommend here is by Syncnex and you can find it right here on GitHub. The link is in the description. And once you're here, you're going to click code and then download zip. And I already have it downloaded so we'll just click on it here and it's in this zip file. We're going to click and drag this over to the desktop. I already have it there. And when we go to the desktop, it's right here. But we're not going to interface with the, the folder directly there. We're going to right click on Start and then click PowerShell Admin. And then from here, first we're going to tell Windows to let us run this script. So we're going to type set. I'll put this whole command in the, com in the description so that you can just copy and paste it. Set-execution policy space unrestricted and don't worry we'll come back and we'll put this back the way it was you know, I know you guys are security conscious and just like me and then it's gonna ask us do we want to do yes yes to all no okay we're gonna type a because we want to approve all and then there now we're going to type CD backslash and then and, and enter then CD space period forward slash users slash and then your username in my case is Nico and then forward slash desktop now we are on the desktop we are essentially right here but we are doing it with the PowerShell command line and we can hit DIR and we see all of this here and it will be under Windows 10 D bloater it's right here so we are going to CD space period forward slash Windows 10 it is case sensitive. Debloater dash master, just like it says right here. And then hit enter. And then if I type DAR, which is pull up the directory, it's going to show that I have some options here. Now I'm going to hit period forward slash Windows 10 debloater GUI.ps1. PS is a PowerShell script. Now the other options here, the sysprep debloater is if you are preparing a brand new machine. The debloater regular is an automated script which is just going to do everything without you putting any control into it, which I'll do for some machines if I'm making 10 machines for a client. But in this case, we're going to use the GUI or graphic user interface so we can control exactly what it's going to remove and what it's going to keep. Hit enter. And then we're going to run once by typing R and it is going to start the script. Okay, so now that you've had this window pop up, it's okay, it's part of the script. We're going to click here at the top to customize block list. We're gonna choose what is removed and what's not removed. Now, when this thing here comes up, these things that are in gray are not going to let us remove it because um, what we've discovered is, is that you shouldn't remember, remove some things. Some things, like for example, we're not going to remove Microsoft Edge. I don't care if you don't like it. If you remove it from Windows, it causes stability issues. So these things that are checked here already, we can uncheck these if we want to keep them. I don't want messaging. I don't want 3D Viewer or Office Hub, Network Speed Test. I don't need any of that. Um, I don't use People or OneConnect. I don't use the Skype app. I do use the Store app, so I'm going to keep Microsoft Store. And I'm not going to use alarms. I don't use Windows Maps. I do play some Windows Store games, so I'm going to keep the Xbox stuff enabled. And I don't use Zune, Eclipse Manager, Duolingo. Um, 
I don't use Adobe Photoshop Express, which is if you have Adobe Photoshop, that's not what this is. This is whatever comes with it. I don't use any of these Candy Crush, Duolingo. Uh, I'm gonna leave Dolby there. And I'm gonna leave Microsoft Store engagement just so I don't have any kind of issues with the Microsoft Store. I don't want sticky notes. I am gonna keep NVIDIA Control Panel. I'm gonna leave these .NET frameworks. I'm gonna leave the VC libs. I'm going to leave all of the .NET. I could remove them, it's not going to hurt anything. I'm going to allow real tech. So here's where you can allow, if you have like an Asus computer, here's where you can make sure that Armory Crate doesn't get removed. For example, right here, Armory Crate's not going to be removed. And I'm going to leave, we are going to leave Edge. Okay, like I said, we're not going to remove Edge. I don't care what the script says, we're not going to do that. A lot of people in the IT community still remove Edge. But I can tell you for a fact it causes stability issues and some people have their heads in the sand. Case in point, the Linux community. I love Linux, but a lot of people with their heads in the sand. Okay, we can leave these runtimes in here. I'm gonna take that out. And you just go through here, anything you wanna keep. I am gonna leave the Windows camera just because I use it. I'm gonna leave these video extensions. I'm not gonna keep the desktop app installer. I'm gonna leave that, I'm gonna leave paint. Leave photos and leave store. So now I'm going to go through here and keep these extensions. Don't know what this is, so it can go. And I'll keep the .NET, which you can remove these. If you do end up needing it, Windows is going to automatically install it anyway. And so I'm going to get. So what I'm removing is Sway, Roll Revolt, Minecraft, Spotify, Facebook, Pandora, and all these things. Uh, I'm going to leave Spotify in there because I do use Spotify since I, uh, I do produce music, which you can check that out in Spotify in the description. So this is actually really good for privacy as well. So, oh, by the way, speaking of privacy, check out this. Right now, Big Tech is collecting data on everything you do online and building a profile on you for financial gain, and you don't see a penny of it. Take back your privacy and take back control over your connected life by using a reliable VPN. Unsecure websites and public Wi-Fi are the easiest ways hackers can wreak havoc in your lives. But if you have NordVPN with its military-grade encryption, lightning-fast speed, and over 5,000 servers worldwide, you can browse safely and privately. NordVPN also has state-of-the-art, dedicated peer-to-peer -peer servers to protect your usage from your ISP, as well as Big Brother and with advanced obfuscation servers, you can access blocked websites or even streaming services such as Netflix, Hulu, and more anywhere in the world. NordVPN has a strict no-logs policy and has never and will never be pressured by governments. Take back your privacy today and use my exclusive link in the description to get a huge discount on NordVPN. Stay safe. All right, so welcome back. We're going through here. I've made sure that I don't want to remove anything here that uh, I actually need, but now that I've done that, I can save custom allow list. And once this is done, we can go to the next step. Okay, once you've clicked Save Custom, you can go ahead, after maybe five seconds, go ahead and close it. Now we can go to Remove All Bloatware. And then, but we're not going to do that. We have a custom list. So click here, Remove Bloatware with Custom List. And you can see what's going on here. It's doing all the removals. And this is stuff that you might not be able to do with add remove programs. Okay, bloatware has been removed. Bada bing, done. Okay. Now, if you did something that you're not happy with, two things. There is a restore point, so you can go back in time to right before we did this. And you can do that by clicking search, restore points, and go to click a create a restore point. But then you can actually click system restore. And then you can go to choose a different restore. And then this was right here before using Win 10 Debloater. And if you click next and a couple more menus, you'll actually go back to right where before you start this. Or you can just revert the registry changes. The apps will still be removed, but the registry will go back so that Windows knows that, for example, if you removed Edge, it's going to get Edge next Windows update because you fixed the registry. Another thing you can do here is I always disable Cortana. I don't use Cortana. And you can disable Edge PDF, because if you use Adobe you know, Acrobat Reader, which everybody should be, you can disable Edge from trying to control PDFs. You can enable the dark theme, which I always do. And here you can also uninstall OneDrive. If you don't use OneDrive, why have it there? It makes it a pain. If you use it for school, leave it alone. 
and then you can unpin tiles from the start menu. Now I've already done a deep bloat previously, so I need all this here. But if you have a ton of things pinned there that are Microsoft Office trial and all these things, you might want to just wipe it so that you can put your own there. So you can remove the bloatware registry keys. I'm not a fan of, of registry keys. I know some of you guys love killing keys and using CCleaner and things. You know, the jury is still out, so maybe you're right. It's just my preference. I don't mess with the registry unless I am specifically trying to change something in the OS that I want to change. Leaving them there is not going to hurt anything. And then here, you know privacy is a big thing with me. Hence, that's why I'm an I'm a affiliate of NordVPN. But here we can disable telemetry. If you haven't watched my other videos, telemetry is a background service that tracks what's going on in the machine and transmits it to NVIDIA, to Microsoft, and a lot of other people. So we can go ahead and disable telemetry tasks. And then we talked about .NET a little bit. .NET uh, is needed for a lot of things, especially games. If you don't already have it, which you probably do, you can go ahead and install, you know, net uh, version 3.5. Uh, normally, I only need to do this on a fresh install that hasn't gotten all the Windows updates. But after that's done, we can close this, but we're not going to close it just yet. Because remember, we are going to put the security back. We can hit the up arrow a couple times until we get to right here where it says execution policy unrestricted we can just use the arrow keys and delete the un and make it restricted and then a again and now we've undone that and we've restored the security back to where it was scripts are not allowed to just run rampant on your machine because in this case we wanted to run this, the, the script but in in the other cases you don't want like a malicious script to be running after you reboot you'll notice now I've got several things going on here, but if I go here to performance and we go to CPU, I have only 199 processes. I'm running Firefox with two tabs open, OBS, I have ESET open, PowerShell, Task Manager, Settings open, and I also have a Word document open. You're probably up to 280 or over 300 tasks. You'll get reduced to 120 after this. Your system performance will be improved by anywhere from 20 to 40 percent. Um, so after this, you can reboot and use your machine and everything should be golden. I hope this was a benefit to you. And if you like this, hit like and consider subscribing. And I will see you next time.